So are you ready, my friends? Ready? It's record me Okay. So, bom dia, boa tarde ou boa noite, dependendo do horário. So, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, our podcast today is going to be in English because we have special guests today from the United States. And on my left side, I have Edson Berin. Hi. My right side, I have Flavio Chandos, you know. Hi. Okay. <laughs> And I have a very, very important person here. His name is Mo Vela. And just beside Mo Vela, Brian. And on my left side, we have Fernando Pinguelo. Very well recognized attorney from New York and most from Washington, and also I have Faria Lima, the one of the most uh, IT experts, most recognized IT experts from Brazil. So, welcome again to our TI para negócios, IT for business. So, next, welcome. <laughs> and now I'm gonna, you know, take the, the word for you. And also okay. time okay. You know, So uh, I just would like to to ask you to introduce yourself and tell about your visit here to Brazil. Uh, what's the main purpose of that? And you know, that that's the idea. Please, well, sure. To start. Well, first of all, I uh, uh, the most important thing to to say first is I've been in Brazil now for six days, and um, I have found the Brazilian people to be the most gracious most warm, beautiful people I've ever seen in the world, honestly. Uh, it's amazing. I, I leave tomorrow knowing I want to come back. So, as long as we drop some money while we're here, right? <laughs> Contribute to the Brazilian economy. Thank you. That's uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Please come back. But the, uh, uh, actually, I have a dual purpose. A uh, reason I'm visiting Brazil this week. Uh, one is completely out of my love and admiration and respect for Congressman Varia Lima uh, and for his son-in-law, uh, Renato, and uh, his uh, daughter, of course, Roberta, who have uh, become my very dear friends and fe like family. And so that, of course, is one of the reasons I'm here, was to spend time with them. Um, and then the second reason is business-related. Uh, so in relation to your show, right, to what you're discussing today, uh, I'm very fortunate to have several technology clients. Uh, I do business development consulting, and so several of my clients are in different, uh, to have different technology initiatives, uh, and I am uh, hoping that I can introduce some of those to the Brazilian marketplace, uh, help them grow their business, but also help the Brazilian people um, and uh, be to benefit from some of these new technologies in healthcare, uh, in uh, the entertainment industry, and medical device technology, and a few other areas. So that really is the, the purpose of my visit uh, in, on the business front, was to come and bring some of my clients and try to introduce them to the Brazilian market. And I'll tell you, in uh, In return, I hope I get a chance to visit with some Brazilian companies who want to come do business in the United States, uh, where we can be very helpful to them and offer them the opportunity to grow their businesses. In the same way I help my clients come here, we can help Brazilian companies come to the United States and open some new doors and some new markets and help them to, help them to grow. So they are new in Brazil, they are not here already. That is correct. They will all be new to Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, I sound a little uh, confident. I probably overconfident, uh, but I am so optimistic after my visit here that the people are so open and receptive to new technologies and new ideas, new concepts, new vision. Uh, and I frankly am going to go back and lecture the United States to learn from the Brazilian people to recognize how important it is to listen and to learn and to be willing to grow and to be willing to try new things That's good. and not be afraid. So I leave very confident that we're going to be able to uh, exchange ideas, uh, bring some new business and hopefully again take some back home. So it's exciting. So this is going to be a very good lunch, people. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to ask before, I'm going to ask you, Mo has a very impressive 
experience in the past. So Mo, before becoming or coming back to the business yeah. field, what did you use it to do? Well, you know what, I am, um, I, I, I say very often I'm a very, very lucky man from a very small town in South Texas, which is the southernmost state. Well, Florida thinks they're a little further south, but we compete to see where it is. Yes, Texas. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I do too. And uh, you know, in Texas, we're kind of we're raised to think everything is bigger and better in Texas, right? <laughs> that's what the best was. That's where Alaska came to. That's yeah. right. They may be better congressmen <laughs> geographically, but they're not better intellectually. I assure you. But uh, we're not. I you know have the privilege of. Uh, being the first Latino, the first Hispanic American, Latino American, uh, to serve twice in the White House of the United States. I was Vice President Gore's Deputy Chief of Staff and uh, his Chief Financial Officer and Senior Advisor. Um, and I now most recently was Vice President Biden's Deputy Chief of Staff for Management and Administration. So I, uh, I've had a very unique privilege uh, to get to serve my country uh, and the highest levels of our government. Uh, and more importantly, frankly, I got to meet thousands of beautiful American people as I travel across the country uh, and meet people with beautiful spirits, just like here in Brazil, with good ideas, just like here in Brazil. Uh, people that uh, are going to change the world and make life better. And I, I would never have had that opportunity had I not been able to serve in the White House, you know. and. I'm very eternally grateful to the Vice President. He um, gave me the chance of a lifetime to serve a second time. Um, you know, and in between the two times in the White House, I had an extensive business background, an entrepreneurial background. Uh, I um, have owned a very large real estate company. I'm an attorney. I tried practicing law. I can't be as good at Renato and Fernando. And when I realized I would never be as good at Renato and Fernando, I decided to stop doing it and just be a businessman and an entrepreneur. Um, so I have an extensive business background as well. I started several companies, raised, raised multiple millions of dollars on Wall Street. Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy working with an idea at the conceptual stage and watching it grow mm -hmm. and doing whatever it takes to get from concept to fruition, as we say in English, to the market. And God willing, profitable, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> good. The good Lord will help us we get to the profitable stage and then uh, an, an exit of some kind, yeah. right? So this is sustainability also. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, the challenges of developing sustainability, the challenges of finding viability, right? Uh -huh. Because you have to, a lot of people have good ideas and good concepts. But unfortunately, that's not enough, as we all know, right, in business. So anyway, uh, I was a very long answer to your question, but the, that's very much. that was my thing. Kind of you forgot your artist background. Well, you know, I you used to be a singer. I, 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 I was a singer, <laughs> yes. At the age of 22, after I graduated from the University of Texas, a few years ago, oh, yeah, just a few years ago. Thank you. I like you. <laughs> I told you the Brazilian people are good people. See, um, so you know, um, I've, I've been, uh, I've had a, as we say in Texas, it's been a good ride. Do you understand that? Sure. It's a horse riding analogy, yeah. right? Because of the Texas, you know, we were raised on ranches, of course. Cowboys. cowboys. So by the way, <laughs> what's your favorite song? My favorite song? Oh my goodness. I, you know, I think it has to be Frank Sinatra's My Way. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because, you know, I, I, uh, as I've learned on my journey, uh, in both times in the White House and in the business world, and I hope that this helps some of the people that are going to watch this podcast, um, you know, in business, there will always be challenges, and there will always be obstacles, and there will always be people who will try to keep you from gaining success. Mm -hmm. And so I've always said, I'm going to do it my way. Mm -hmm. And at the end, my way either worked, and if it didn't work, only I'm responsible for the failure, 
or the success, right? Yeah. So I did it my way. Could you give us a <clears throat> No. No. <laughs> no. no. Oh, that was so we, we, we have three more. Uh, three more blocks. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. <laughs> At the end, right? Yes. So please, Fernando. Those. Thank you, and thank you for this uh, opportunity. It's a wonderful experience, and I echo Mo's sentiments about the uh, culture here and the people, both at every level. Um, I have a personal connection to the country. I mean, I'm a Brazilian, I'm a So I, you know, not only know the language, but I also understand and know the culture very well. And um, I have the good fortune to have great hosts like Renato and his firm and, and the congressman. And it's been a great uh, opportunity for me. And like Mo, my uh, uh, stay here is multifaceted. It is sort of a, uh, a trip, a goodwill trip, uh, so to speak. Um, primarily in, here to meet with clients, uh, uh, clients that uh, Renato has developed and, and I have uh, jointly. Um, it's interesting because you know, many of my clients are, are located all over the world and a, a large percentage of them I've never met in person, mm -hmm. and it is a uh, conscious effort that I'm making to actually connect with them in a room over a meal like this, and really spend time with them. And it is amazing how you know technology is great. Technology innovation enables us to be, I'd like to say, in many places at once, but it has significant limitations, which is the lack of the personal human connection. And it is amazing every time I come to Brazil, and I try to make it you know three, four, five times a year. I come back with more, so it is a great opportunity. And also to connect with colleagues like Renato, I serve as Renato's uh, National Coordinating Council for uh, U.S. operations, so to the extent that any of Renato's clients have issues that uh, require uh, specialization in the United States, I work very closely with his team to create a seamless approach with the client. In, in, in many respects, you know, we become one firm, and it is a great dynamic because clients don't like to see many lawyers on bills. I mean, it is a, a, a seamless uh, engagement. And um, and the third is to connect with family. I have uh, cousins and second cousins that are still here, and I have the good fortune that any time I need to be picked up at the airport, I have a ride. Yes, Sao Paulo. Yes, Sao Paulo. Same, 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 same. And um, uh, Renato's met my uh, cousin Mario who uh, also travels uh, many of the same places in Portugal and, and Brazil mm -hmm. together. And then I have an educational component. I also um, serve as an adjunct law professor at Seton Hall University Law School in Newark, New Jersey. I created an innovative course on electronic discovery. It's, it's sort of the impact that technology has on lawsuits. And at the time, which was, dates back to 2009, I think there were only one or two of such courses in the country uh, in the United States. Now there are about two dozen, so it's been a great uh, opportunity for me to connect with the next generation of lawyers. One thing I like about uh, teaching, and it certainly has nothing to do with the pay, because we get paid very little, almost zero, but uh, it is really to connect with the next generation of lawyers, because they are very different, and they think differently, they operate differently, and you know, I think older generations attribute that and say they're not as smart or, or, or just not as um, um, hardworking, and I think that is an unfair characterization. They just do things differently, and it's, it's great to be connect with that generation. It's very important to me. So I have had the good fortune of being appointed by the uh, Fulbright program in the United States as a specialist in electronic uh, data communications, and so I will be doing a uh, fellowship with McKenzie University here in Sao Paulo for uh, about three weeks in um, in uh, September of this year, which is going to be a great way to really immerse myself. I mean, talk about being with the youth of uh, mm -hmm. our nation, of, of, of my nation, but also then to connect with the youth here. And, you know, contrary to my maybe young appearance, I am 41, so, you know, I, I don't consider myself a young lawyer anymore. <laughs> so, I, I am dealing with, I am the X generation, and I am dealing with the Y generation, the mill also known as the millennials. <laughs> and then um, the third component is to establish new uh, relationships. Um, Renato has been an, an enormous help in that regard. Uh, in many respects, we are you know, working closely with Mo in, in developing new relationships. And um, it's just amazing. Every, every day here uh, has offered uh, new opportunities. And one, you know, one introduction you know, can turn into four That's right. within you know, less than 24 hours. And in fact, we're sort of set, we separate and then reconnect. And it's been a great uh, opportunity to do that. Because I think 
And as Mo had indicated earlier, it is so important to um, communicate between nations. And I know the White House has uh, been um, very open to this part of the world. And you know, all eyes are focused on this world because of some significant uh, events coming up, including the World Cup and the um, Olympics. And you know, in that vein, I've been working closely with Renato about the Olympics and the security aspect of the infrastructure. And that's something that regarding you know, IT, I, or, right, or IT, or exactly. You know, when, when I was just talking to Renato, one of the things you know when people think of you know building infrastructure to host you know two enormous, the two largest, one of the two largest events sporting events in the world, they think of bridges and cement and, and, and mass transit and you know electrical plants. But you know, if you think about it, what's behind the scenes is the technology. Different. And you know, at the time the London Olympics was known as the most technologically advanced Olympics at the time. But I can guarantee you the Brazilian the Rio games in 2016 will beat that. So mm -hmm. that is what uh, Renato and I are focusing on, you know, on the legal components of that and the importance of that. And we're going to be doing some uh, significant uh, speaking to some executives uh, at the end of August on those very issues. But um, it's been a great uh, ride so far, and I leave on Sunday. But I will be back. <laughs> <laughs> I have some points. Uh, for first of all, you're not going to ask me what my favorite song is. <laughs> What's your favorite? Well, What's our well, favorite song? Okay, yeah. I don't know if I can. And I'm going to ask for a sample. It's New York. Ah. New York. But it's from you know, New, York. New York. Yeah. I am a big fan of Eminem. Oh my God. And a big fan of Green Day. Do you have samples? Wow. Day. I do have some samples. What about Taylor Swift? Do I have to edit the uh, cursing, or is it uh, is this uh, free speech? Well, actually, free speech. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get it right now. Oh, yeah, I'm serious. Uh, all right, hold on a second. It's let's very see. formal. Let's see. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> the way you're speaking you know, lately, uh, there's something that is very interesting for us proceedings. Uh, you know, I think this area, you know, we talk about IT and IT security, we have some points together. But you have mentioned about e discovery. We don't have e discovery in Brazil. That's a Point that I can explore in the next block, maybe. Sure. And now, so we must talk about privacy, no challenges regarding you know, IT, technology, how technology comes so far, I think it's always good, always important. And when you mentioned McKinsey, you know, we have, new, we have different generations here together, that's very important. That's right. And when you look at the congressman, yeah. congressman, why, why have you graduated? Nice. McKinsey, right? In the old days. Wait a minute, gonna, I'm going to have him guest lecture in my classes. I'm a close friend to Lembo. Lembo is now uh, he's the he's head governor of São Paulo. He's a uh, hey, tour of Mackenzie. Hey, yeah. yeah. The dean. Dean. Yeah. Yeah. dean of Mackenzie. Okay, All right. Mackenzie is one of the best universities. I've been impressed. I have been <laughs> impressed. <laughs> I have been impressed. I must say, they've been nothing but a great host. Yeah. I just got off the phone with the and the boss. Beautiful place near Sun You know, it downtown. reminds me of uh, Cambridge. <clears throat> I, I went to school in Boston, Boston College, and Boston College Law School, which was right across the river from uh, the Charles River from uh, Cambridge. It has this, you know, Harvard Square, Cambridge right. feel to it. So uh, it brought back memories. Many many years ago, where I graduated in 1997. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's been. Uh, it's been a pleasure. You know, look, I think when you talk about technology, okay, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I, I know that your podcast is, is about the use of technology in our businesses and how to grow our businesses using technology, right? And of course, the issues of privacy and that's right, cybersecurity and all the issues that come with the advancements of technology, right? But, you know, I want to make sure that your viewers never forget something very fundamental. I have the privilege of giving a lot of speeches throughout the year. And I always remind my younger audiences especially, this millennial generation, right, mm -hmm. that Fernando's referring to. When it comes to technology, nobody's more advanced than they are, right? They're coming out of college and school with all kinds of incredible ideas and innovative concepts on, in the world of technology. And they're our future in both of our countries, right? Um, the one thing I warn them about, okay, that I think we have to be very careful about, no matter how advanced our technology gets, no matter how far we go with technology, right, we cannot ever forget that at the end of the day, a handshake 
and verbal communication mm -hmm. are still imperative and an yeah. integral part of a successful business. That's right. And too many times, the millennial generation now, it, they know how to text, yeah. but they don't necessarily know how to effectively communicate verbally <laughs> because technology is phenomenal. The but the youth it can also be a very dangerous thing if it replaces the original way we're supposed to communicate, okay? So I say to business owners, yes, IT is the key, yes. but use it wisely. And don't, am I right, Congressman? Sure, and I like communication. <laughs> yes, there's a reason we're in Brazil. If technology was the solution to everything in business, we would not be here. We would have just done it on email right. or on Skype, but you still have to shake hands. And in Brazil, you still better hug everybody, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I learned that these two six kisses, days. Two and two kisses. Two kisses. Oh, that's two kisses. Three times. Yeah, that's only real. So I get the kiss. So for your viewers. So, so Paul, one kiss, in Rio, two kisses. Oh, there you go. That's right. That's right. That's as long right. as there's that's a kiss, that's right. all that matters. Right. Right. But you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, I think are, one of our problems really is right, that people are losing the original the human content. Absolutely. But guys, Touch, I'll, I'll, ask you, I'll, I'll ask you for just a pause, and we are coming back for the next block to continue with this conversation, okay? Okay, perfect. Nice. Okay, thank See you. you. See you.